Hello, the Oral Health Forum is proud to present to you a presentation on oral health. We're going to explore ways on how to improve our oral health and why it is important to do so. We will be covering the basics of dental care, like brushing and flossing, and there will also be some unique tips to further help you prevent cavities that I'm sure you'll enjoy. Why is oral health so important? Well, if you think about it, we use our teeth every day. We use our teeth to talk, to eat, to smile. The health of our mouth offers clues about our overall health as well. Like other areas of the body, your mouth is full of bacteria, most of them being harmless. Normally, the body's natural defenses and good oral health care, such as daily brushing and flossing, keep bacteria under control. However, Without proper oral hygiene, bacteria can reach levels that might lead to oral infections, such as tooth decay and gum disease. How is our mouth connected to the health of our body? There is an increasing amount of evidence linking gum disease to an increased risk of heart disease. Some researchers think that mouth infections, like any infections, can increase the levels of inflammatory substances in the blood which can promote blood clots and slow blood flow to the heart. You can say that our mouth is like the window to our body. We protect our teeth from cavities. A cavity is a hole on your tooth that is caused by the buildup of plaque. And plaque is just another word for food and bacteria. With the buildup of, bac of bacteria and sugar, this can turn into an acid and burn a hole. Cavities that are not fixed can cause sensitivity, pain, infections, and can even cause you to lose your teeth. Not fixing a cavity right away can also lead to tooth loss. There is no way for us ourselves to reverse a cavity. The only way we can fix a cavity is by visiting a dentist. The more you wait, the more that pain can get worse. We want to be brushing our teeth twice a day. Brushing our teeth helps remove plaque, prevent cavities, and it also stimulates gums. Dentists recommend that we brush at least twice a day, once in the morning and once at night for two minutes. Always use fluoridated toothpaste. If you're not sure if your toothpaste has fluoride, you can always read the back. People use timers to measure how long they brush, and some electrical toothbrushes can also turn off after two minutes. When you brush, you want to aim the toothbrush at a 45 degree angle towards the gum line and use a gentle circular motion. And of course, you'll want to repeat on the inside surfaces. Here's a video that visually shows us the accurate way to brush our teeth. You can find this video on our website. What sort of toothbrush should you use? The American Dental Association recommends to use a toothbrush with soft bristles. It's important to replace your toothbrush every three months in order to inhibit the spread of bacteria. Either manual or electric toothbrushes can be used effectively. Just as brushing is important, flossing is also important as well. Flossing removes plaque, cleans small spaces, and prevents gum diseases like gingivitis. You want to be flossing at least once a day, preferably in the evening time after you're done eating. Some gum diseases like gingivitis is reversible and preventable, but left untreated, gingivitis can progress into periodontitis. This disease can lead to the loss of teeth. Some symptoms of gingivitis include red and puffy gums that bleed easily when the person brushes their teeth. Here are some stages of gum disease. We want our gums to be strong and healthy in a nice pink shade but the more we do not floss and we leave bacteria in between our gum and our teeth, the more infected our gums can be. How to floss properly. So you wanna break off a piece of floss about arm's length, wrap the floss around two of your fingers. You wanna place a floss in between two teeth, gently glide the floss up and down as if the floss is hugging the tooth in a C shape. You do not want to do a seesaw motion because this could cut your gums since your gums are very fragile. Repeat the steps as you move from tooth to tooth. With each new tooth, 
use a new clean section of floss. Those with braces have a special type of floss that helps them weave in and out their brackets. Here's a video that accurately explains how to floss properly. You can find this video on our website. There are various types of floss that can benefit different people. Dentists recommend using string floss because of its flexibility and can adjust to the person's liking. Pre-cut floss and picks are seen as more favorable to the public because of their convenience, but you do have a higher risk of transferring bacteria to other spaces. Try rinsing the floss every time you begin to floss a new area when using these pre-cut floss picks. Water flossing is a way to clean between and around your teeth. The water flosser is a handheld device that sprays streams of water in steady pulses. The water, like traditional floss, removes food from between teeth. Another way to take care of our oral health is by eating healthy. Every food you eat or beverage you drink comes in contact with your teeth, which means those choices continually impact the health of your teeth and gums. Here is a picture of the U.S. food plate. As we can see, the vegetable portion takes a lot of space in this food plate. Fruits make up a smaller portion and grains also make a larger portion as equally as vegetables. Proteins and dairy are a smaller portion of the plate. So we want to eat a, a various amount of vegetables and fruits because all of them have different types of vitamins and can benefit us differently. Here is a condensed chart that explains which types of foods you should be eating more of and less of. We want to be eating a lot of fruits, vegetables, starches, and water. And we want to try to limit our sweets, our juices, white bread, ice, and carbonated drinks. Ice should be only left to cool our drinks and not to chew on because that ice can be very damaging to our enamel. The same thing goes for carbonated drinks, such as soda and sparkling water. The fizzing can also be detrimental to the enamel. Another great way to protect your teeth is chewing sugar-free gum. When we chew gum, we make saliva in our mouth, which helps neutralize the acid caused by sugar and bacteria. It's good to chew gum after a meal or on the go when you can't brush in between meals. If you're not sure if your gum is sugar-free or not, you can always read the back of the package and read the ingredients, and it'll tell you if there is sugar. Drinking tap water can also support our teeth. Our tap water is fluoridated. Fluoride is a natural occurring mineral that is used to strengthen enamel. Fluoride is also found in our toothpaste. The Environmental Protection Agency and the Chicago Department of Water Management state that Chicago's water is safe to drink. But if it's possible, try to use water filters as much as you can. Mouth guards are also very important to take care of our teeth. A mouth guard is a soft plastic or laminate device used in sports to prevent oral injuries to the teeth, mouth, cheeks, tongue, and jaw. The use of a mouth guard for collision sports can prevent more than 200,000 oral injuries to the mouth each year. Smoking can be also be very detrimental to our oral health. Smoking can lead to stained teeth, bad breath, tooth loss, gum disease, loss of taste and smell, reduce blood supply to the mouth, and increase our risk of oral cancer, which we'll be talking about a little bit later in our other slides. How does smoking affect the gums? Smoking tobacco causes a lack of oxygen in your bloodstream, leading to the infected gums not being able to heal. It also causes gum disease to progress faster than in non-smokers. Vaping is seen as less harmful than smoking, but it is still not safe. E-cigarettes, heat nicotine, flavorings, and other chemicals to create an aerosol that you inhale. There is still a lot unknown information about vaping. But as of 
January 21st, 2020, the CDC confirmed 60 deaths in patients associated with e-cigarettes or vaping. Research suggests vaping is bad for your heart and lungs. Nicotine is the primary agent in both regular cigarettes and e-cigarettes, and it is highly addictive. It causes you to crave a smoke and suffer withdrawal symptoms if you ignore the craving. Nicotine also can be addictive as heroin and cocaine. Oral cancer is an uncontrolled growth of abnormal cells beginning in the mouth region and possibly spreading to other surrounding areas of the body. Oral cancer can affect your lips, cheek lining, gums, tongue, floor, roof of mouth, and the back of your throat. Some symptoms include a sore or irritation that doesn't go away, red or white patches, pain, tenderness, or numbness in mouth or lips, a lump thickening rough spots, crusted areas, difficulty chewing, swallowing, speaking, or moving your tongue or jaw. People with poor oral hygiene or dental care and HPV may have an increased risk of oral cavity cancer. HPV stands for human papillomavirus. There is no cure, but it is preventable and it is treatable. It is one of the most common sexually transmitted infections, and there are more than 200 types. Most people with HPV have no symptoms, but there are some HPV that can lead to genital warts or even certain types of cancers. So that's why it's very important to avoid HPV altogether. About 40 can affect your genital area, as well as your mouth and your throat. Other common ones include warts on your hands and feet. HPV is easily spread from sexual skin-to-skin -skin contact with someone who has the virus. How can we protect ourselves from HPV? There are vaccines that can protect us from HPV's, HPV, and we can use condoms and dental dams when having oral sex. Genital warts can be also removed from your doctor. High-risk HPV can usually be easily treated before it turns into cancer, which is why it is very important for women who are sexually active to have a regular pap smear once every three years. There is currently no reliable HPV test for men, so that is why um, it's important to see symptoms and if you see anything that is not that shouldn't be there, you should visit a healthcare provider routinely. Thank you for watching this presentation. If you have any further questions, you can contact your dentist or email the team at the Oral Health Forum.